Okay, this is a video that I've been meaning to make for a while now, and I was kind of inspired by Arm's speech uh, at the UN yesterday. This whole concept of speaking yourself and sharing your story and showing your how human you are, I guess. Uh, so, I kind of want to share my story, and again, I want to encourage you guys to share yours. Now, I want to preface this. It is going to get a little sad. It's going to get a little, you know, a little emotional. But I, again, I say it in the hopes that it'll inspire you that it will motivate you to stick through whatever tough time you're facing, which I know a lot of you are. Um, because I, I know that when I was growing up and I was going through my struggles, seeing other people succeed and other people persevere really helped me. I also apologize for the hair, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, I, I, I ordered some hair product. It still doesn't come in, so, so yeah. <laughs> what you say? But I, I, wanna, I don't say this for pity. I don't ever want pity. I'm not victimizing myself. But I do want you guys to be hopefully inspired by my message, inspired by my story, and uh, feel like you can make it through whatever you're going through. I just think it's beautiful that now people are being encouraged more to come out and share their stories. And that this is just a beautiful thing that BTS has done. This is a video that I've done for a long time, wanted to do for a long time. So I may still make a draw in my life, but I at least want to tell this right now. I mean, for all I know, I may delete this because sometimes I make videos like these and drop them at the last second. So I don't know. But at the end of every single video that I've ever made, dating back to way before I did BTS reactions, I've always said and reminded you guys to stay strong and love yourselves at the end of the video. So hopefully this video right here will reinforce that message and really inspire you to stay strong and continue to persevere. Because no matter what, there is always a light at the end of the tunnel, I promise you. So yeah, my name is Dylan Alvarez, and this is my story. Growing up, I grew up in small town Salford, Louisiana. Uh, it was just me and my mom in a trailer. Uh, and that may not sound like much, but to me it was enough. You know, my mom, she was my whole world. She was my everything. She truly was, uh, uh, she was just amazing to me. Now, I also had a brother and sister who I loved dearly. Uh, they both lived on their own, though, because by the time I was born, they were already kind of grown up. I'm not going to say names right here because this is all kind of personal family stuff and as you guys will see in a second. Um, so I'm not going to give them names, but they're real people. So it was just me and my mom growing up for the most part, but I did see my brother and sister quite frequently. Um, but anyway, yeah, it was just me and my mom. We were like two peas in a pod. She was my best friend. Like, I would freak out if she was like five minutes late to picking me up from school. So uh, we, I was pretty tired during it. But she had problems that I didn't know about. It was a spring break of, I think, my second grade year. And we were visiting my brother in Texas with his girlfriend at the time and his son. Um, and one night, I went to sleep normal, you know, told her goodnight, I love you, and sweet dreams. Um, what I didn't know is that those would be the last words I ever told my mom. Um, I woke up that morning and I found my mom's lifeless body on a couch. I tried waking her up. I waked up my brother. We both freaked out. We tried waking her up. She was just cold. She felt the same way my grandpa did at his funeral a few years back. So we were freaking out and we called an ambulance. They came in, they did the plugs, they did the, the shock thingies. Um, but she never woke up. As it turns out, and what I would learn later, um, my mom overdosed. Which is why I'm very passionate about, you know, fighting substance abuse and stuff like that. But yeah, so I, I don't know, but it's just that day, it was weird. I was strangely calm. And it's one of the biggest reasons I believe in God. I truly believe she was my angel that day because everybody was crying, everybody was hysterical. And I had this sort of calmness to me, even as I saw her body over her, in a bag get taken out of the house. It was, it was almost like I knew that she wasn't there anymore and she was in a better place. And I truly believe that she was how she had her hand over my heart. And she was in my heart and she was guiding me through that and keeping me strong for other people. So we fast forward a few uh, months. Um, I stayed with my brother for a little bit, but at my f mom's funeral, my dad showed up. Now my dad, I had never met him uh, in my entire life, maybe once or twice in passing, but I'd never met him. I, I didn't even know his real name for really. So that that's that was what was crazy. But he had custody of me, and so my mom's funeral right after that, he took me in, and I'll never forget my brother pleading with me not to go with him and not to go with him. And you know, as an eight-year-old, I, I didn't know any better. I was just like, I, I don't know. And so I ended up going with him. Um, 
And you know, that was such a big moment for what was to come. So I go and live with my dad and he has his own family. He has, a, uh, his, I have a stepmom and uh, two stepbrothers. Now one of the stepbrothers was my age and he hated me, but another stepbrother would actually end up saving my life and we'll get to that later. But anyway, I'm living with my step family and my dad for a few months and at first it's fine. I'm treated like a normal kid. Everything's good. I'm sure it was a huge transition for them. It was a huge transition for me. I had, it was just a whirlwind for me. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Um, and then a few months in, I learned that my brother died in a car crash. You see, my brother and sister had similar problems to my mom with substance abuse. And one day, one night, my brother got into a car and he was, he was drunk and he was on drugs and he didn't put his seatbelt on and he fell asleep in a car with the driver who was also not sober at all. Now the driver, his friend, gets into a car wreck and my brother goes through the windshield. And you know it's bad because at the funeral, he had green paint over his face. That's how, that's how bruised he was. That's how badly hurt he was. And I'll never forget seeing the man who was driving that car. I had no resentment towards him. And my family, credit to them, they were like, Dylan, don't be upset at him. Do not, it was not his fault. And I hope he doesn't have that burden on his heart because my brother did make the decision on his own to not wear a seatbelt and you know, they weren't in a good place in life. And honestly, I believe it was just my brother's time to go. I believe that it was God. I really do believe it was God. My mom saying, it's your time. You're not happy on earth. So we want you up here. You know, that's hard to see in the moment because you're upset, you're grieving and you're in denial. Uh, but after a few years, you kind of start realizing that it, you know, he's in a better place and that's that's where my faith comes in. But yeah, so within a few months I lost my brother and my sister. Uh, and, and I continue living with my stepmom and my dad and step family. And you know, things start getting a little bit worse as time goes on. Um, you know, I start kind of getting treated as, you know, the stepchild that you always see portrayed in movies and stuff like I start getting treated worse and worse by my stepmom, but it's not completely terrible. But by the end of the first year, it's kind of getting worse. I'm starting to kind of get insulted and I'm kind of starting to get, you know, just like really bad vibes from them. Um, and to top things off, by the end of that first year that I was there, um, I learned that my sister took her own life. Again. I didn't even get to go to her funeral because my dad didn't tell me until a little while after it actually happened. And I, I see his reasoning. I see that it, the traumatic toll that it could take on me, but... At the time, when I was eight, they told me that she just died in a car crash. It wasn't until years later that I, I learned the truth. And... She just must have been in such a dark place, which is again is why I always urge you guys to seek help and fight. I don't blame my sister. My sister was not weak. My sister had a child. She dealt with so much, but you can only take so much at a certain point. And I don't ever, I won't ever be mad at her. I won't ever be mad at my mom. I mean, I did go through that anger at one point, but now it's just like, again, I believe they're in a much better place and it was just their time. and. You know, my mom and them wanted to be together and they're watching over us and helping us guide us to a better purpose. And not, again, I'm rambling on this, so it's like, you know, I, I've never, like, I don't, I just, I don't know, I'm just rambling right now. I didn't have this written down. Again, it was really, so I'm talking my head, but, so by the time I was nine, um, I lost my mom, my brother, and my sister, and I was, you know, I was starting to get treated badly by my stepmom. That bad treatment ended up becoming abuse and neglect. You know, as time went on, she started insulting me more. I ended up becoming verbally abused. Uh, she'd call me gay, she'd call me a faggot, worthless, <laughs> the list goes on. Um, and she would constantly degrade me. Uh, and it didn't help that she would sometimes physically abuse me too. And I mean, not, not that this is the worst case, 
of physical abuse, but she would make me stretch out my arms and she would lash my arms with a belt like 10 to 20 times. One time it was for looking at a mirror. Can you imagine? One time I looked at a mirror and she made me stretch my arms out and she uh, she, she she lashed me 13 times. So that, that was not fun. But I think it wasn't the physical abuse or the emotional abuse that really was the hardest thing to deal with. It's whatever. I ended up really getting tough skin, but what, what I think really hurt the most was just being trapped inside of a room. The only time I was allowed to go outside my room was at school. I wasn't even allowed to take showers when I wanted to. I wasn't allowed to go to the kitchen and get food. I wasn't allowed to go outside, let alone hang out and play with friends. So we have me being locked in a room. Make matters worse, she would neglect me. So she wouldn't wash my clothes. She wouldn't take me to the doctor. Um, you know, it's those kinds of things. At one point, I was having an asthma attack for a week. I was breathing and I was staying up at night, rocking back and forth until she finally took me to the doctor and they're like, he's having an asthma attack. And the reason she took me to the doctor is because I had red dots all over my face. I think I got chicken pox, so I, I don't know, man. But, so that ended up happening. I'm honestly lucky, I really am. I, I'm really lucky that I survived that because like, looking back, it, you don't know what pain is until you actually can't breathe and it, it, it's just a horrible feeling and to top off the neglect I was getting starved and I'm just gonna put it straight at that I wasn't allowed to go in the kitchen and get food and in the summer she would feed me maybe in the morning a little bit like maybe like a, a freaking egg and tortilla uh, and, and that'd be at like 10 a.m. and she wouldn't feed me again until 8 or 9 at night and imagine and imagine she literally knock on my like, it's like a prisoner she knock on my door give me the food and run and so literally I was here with just like a little bit of food and I couldn't ask for more even if I did ask for more it was pointless uh, so I, I was hungry I was definitely hungry uh, and a lot of times I would even drink the sink water in the bathroom because she wouldn't give me water so that that was fun so at this point I'm starved I mean I'm really malnourished um, I'm going to school with smelly clothes, with a smelly breath, as you imagine, you have two pins of toothbrush. Uh, I stink, I'm skinny, and I don't have any social skills because I'm trapped in a room with nothing but TV. So, as you can imagine, I was getting bullied really, really badly. Like, I was, I was really badly bullied. Like, the list would go on and on about, I was punched, I was kicked, I was, I was pretty much assaulted. Uh, not sexually, of course. That, not that. I'm lucky that didn't happen. But um, I was just tormented. But it's cool because I actually did find a couple of friends throughout those years that looked past all my flaws and looked past everything that was going on, and uh, were actually friendly to me. And I'm very grateful to those people. And those those people continue to inspire me to be a better person and always be forgiving and accepting. But so essentially, my life was yours if you were grounded for like the worst thing ever. Like if you got punished and it was the worst punishment ever. That was my regular life. Well, my regular life was way worse, probably. But it was funny, because school was my only safe haven. As you can imagine, like going to school, I got a lunch, and uh, maybe a snack, and I'd always ask people if they didn't want this, and this, and this, and I'd eat, and eat, and eat, so. So that was actually something I looked forward to, and it was just an escape from a room that I was trapped in, so. That was something I'm very, I was actually grateful for, despite the fact that I was getting bullied in school a lot. Now, you remember me telling you about one of the stepbrothers who hated me. Yeah, he hated me, and I, I mean, that's the gist of that. I still hope he's doing well. I don't know what he's doing now. But another stepbrother who I continue to talk to now, he, he's probably the reason why I'm alive right now. I'm not going to tell you his name, um, but he, he absolutely made the hugest difference in my life. You, as I said, I was getting starved before. What he would do... Um, he would actually sneak me food. He would sneak me jars of peanut butter. He would sneak me chips. He would sneak me, uh, he sneak me pop tarts uh, and stuff like that that I could eat. And boy, you know I ate it. So he'd sneak me all this food because you know how hungry I was. Uh, he and one time he even snuck me a whole DVD set of Dragon Ball GT. Uh, yeah, it's trash, but at the time I was so grateful. My TV had a little DVD player inside of it, and so I was watching Dragon Ball GT for the longest time. And I don't know, man. He 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 truly, I think, saved my life because um, eventually, what he did is he got me a phone, and he even bought the he bought the prepaid minutes on it. It was a flip phone. He worked and he spent his own money on me, 
and he encouraged me to call my family back in Salford. The, how I did this, I have a Bible, and it's actually back home, it's not in my apartment, but it had the numbers of my aunt and uncle in it, and it was a Bible from my mom's funeral, and I kept it throughout the years. So eventually, and it took a lot of courage, it, there was so much anxiety in me because I didn't want to get in trouble, um, and I didn't want to face the consequences, and I just, I don't know, it's just this fear that you're going to cause trouble. Um, when you're an abused child and it's very scary um, but I eventually I did and I got the courage and I called them and asked them if they take me in and I, and they said you have to ask your dad and I asked my dad and I, he said I don't care it was one of the most anxious moments of my life I was trembling but he said yes and once he said yes I told him yes they asked me when do you want us to come pick you up I said ASAP and from there my life changed forever my aunt and uncle along with my stepbrother's help truly saved my life. If it wasn't for my stepbrother's encouragement, I wouldn't be here right now. If it weren't for them, I probably would have died of malnourishment. I'm not being honest, or I would have ended up falling into a deep, dark pit. But the thing is, I always had faith, and I always knew God was on my side, and I always knew my mom, brother, and sister were watching over me, and that no matter what, things were always going to be okay. No matter how badly bullied I was getting, no matter how much I cried, no matter how hungry I was, I always believed that things would get better, and they did. Now. I'm in college, I'm happy and healthy. My aunt and uncle literally helped me gain 20 pounds in the first two weeks I was there. I was eating bread pudding, I was eating gumbo, I was eating spaghetti. Literally the first meal I had when I got there was spaghetti with the garlic bread and I cannot tell you how much I ate. It's just such a nice warm feeling thinking back on that time. They truly saved my life and I cannot thank my Uncle Mark and KK enough. And my sister Misty for that matter. She made a huge difference in my life too and she continues to help me no matter what we go through. So that's me speaking for myself. Now you guys can imagine why at the end of every video I tell you to stay strong and love yourself. Things can get dark, things can get depressing, things can seem hopeless, but there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. I was at the bottom. I was at almost the very bottom of life. But I worked my way up because I had faith and I knew things would get better. Take care of your body. Be grateful for food. Take care of your soul. Be grateful for God. I'm telling you guys, He's real. I mean, if there's any message with that, it's, uh, if you don't believe, I'd urge you to because I wouldn't have gotten through everything I did if it weren't for something supernatural like God and Jesus. But at the end of the day, no matter what you believe in, no matter what your gender is, no matter what you've been through, you can be successful and you can be somebody. Don't let people take your light away from your heart. Don't let people strip away your love for things, okay? Like RM said, be yourself, speak yourself, love yourself. Let the world know who you are. Say your name, know your name, and know what you love and project that onto the world. There are people like me out here for you guys, and you guys can always reach out to me in my DMs and I'll try my best to respond, which I typically do, especially if it's something like a problem you guys have. I've consistently uh, responded to DMs, so you guys can feel free to respond to me. But also, we have an amazing community on this YouTube channel. I think I have some of the best subscribers in the world, honestly, because you guys are so sweet, so kind, and so loving. But yeah. That's my story, and it was long, and if you stay tuned, thank you, and I hope that it helped you in your life, I hope that it maybe helped brighten your day up, I hope that my smile hopefully made you smile, uh, and I hope that you continue to persevere through whatever darkness you're going through, because I'm telling you, if you do, and I know you can, you will be amazing. God gives his toughest test to his strongest warriors. But yeah, that's me. That's my story. I'm Dylan Alvarez, and I've been through a lot, and I continue to have my flaws, but I love myself. With that being said, guys, make sure to stay strong and love yourself. I'll see y'all next video. Peace out.